When I was a freshman at Boston University, I applied to over 50 mechanical engineering internships. Do you know how many I heard back from? Zero. No emails, no interviews, not even rejections. And I kept wondering, what am I doing wrong? I mean, my grades weren't amazing, but they were average and I followed the typical advice that everyone gives, but nothing seemed to work. A few months later, I changed several things and no, it wasn't my GPA, resume format, or cover letter. And just like that, I got five internship offers. So in this video, I want to show you exactly what I did and how you can apply the same strategy to land your next internship. Now let's begin by talking about why internships matter so much. Think of them as the keys that get you interviews and exciting full-time job offers after graduation. Anyone can get good grades, but relevant internship experience is what employees look for first and fresh grads. Many companies also end up turning their interns into full-time employees because they don't have to spend extra money and time training them. So say you intern at General Electric one summer. They could potentially offer you a full-time job position at the end of your internship if they like you. Even if they don't make an offer and you decide to apply again senior year, you're way ahead of the competition. But the thing you need to know is that nobody will force or remind you to apply so you need to always keep internships at the back of your head and treat them like a full-time job not something optional starting freshman year most professors won't remind you to apply and classmates won't talk about it because everyone is occupied by the time you're a junior it's basically already too late to apply I have a lot of friends who worked at notable corporations straight out of college including Apple Google Meta Tesla and and McKenzie. All of them were able to land jobs at these companies prior to graduation because of internships. Every single one of them had at least one solid internship on their resume before graduation. Some even had three or four. Even the data and studies show that college grads who have done an internship receive significantly more job offers compared to those who have not. The earlier you gain experience, the more options you'll have later. Now, the second Second thing you need to understand is what is the purpose and requirements of an internship. When I was a freshman, I thought the entire point of internships was to teach us everything that academia failed to teach well, like hands-on skills, CAD design, engineering analysis, and the business side of things. However, I quickly learned that this couldn't be further from the truth. Firstly, if the sole purpose of internships is to teach us everything, then anyone could apply and that company would be willing to hire that person. So I learned the hard way that companies want to hire interns who can contribute and make an impact starting on day one because internships are a huge time and financial investment for them. They don't want to train interns from scratch and if you have zero practical skills, it's a risk for them. So this is kind of a frustrating paradox, right? Internships are meant to help you gain experience but they often require you to already possess skills and experience just to get your foot in the door. So after realizing this, it was crystal clear to me that I had to first determine what skills these companies were looking for in applicants. I began by looking through 20 to 30 job descriptions of mechanical engineering internships on LinkedIn and job portals of companies I was interested in. Then I highlighted all the qualifications, material science fundamentals, finite element analysis, 3D CAD modeling, design for manufacturability and assembly, tolerance analysis, drafting and GDNT, mechanical design, 3D printing, must be eligible to work in the US, must be an early bird, must be a nerd and have a minimum GPA of 3.2. After having this list of qualifications, the third step is to develop these skills by joining clubs and a research group. Joining clubs is so easy and anyone can join, but the key is to be an active member and to attend every week. You don't want to join 10 different clubs and end up accomplishing nothing. Just focus on one or two. I joined Boston University's Rocket Propulsion Club as a freshman where I met a bunch of other mechanical, electrical, and computer engineering students and even those studying business and physics. Together we engaged in all aspects of engineering from design work, CAD, and analysis to manufacturing, testing, and construction of rocket engines and 
and sending rockets to space. In parallel, you need to join a research group based on your interests and the type of internship you're looking for. If you want to land a product design oriented internship, join a research group working on design related projects. If you're interested in finding an internship that focuses on simulations and engineering analysis, join a research group that solves problems leveraging FEA, CFD, multi-physics, and numerical methods. I found a design engineering research assistant position within our school's Department of Astronomy. The professor I worked for taught astronomy and astrophysics. Specifically, he needed me to design prototypes and gadgets for science education and optical devices for his patents. The work involved CAD design and SOLIDWORKS, sourcing parts, fasteners, and raw materials, getting them fabricated using a handful of processes like 3D printing, CNC machining, and polishing at our school's state-of-the-art engineering product innovation center and developing jigs and fixtures to assemble everything. Now, in a sense, I got lucky because the professor chose me over several other students who had applied for this opportunity as well, which I'm extremely grateful of because it was a paid position. Obviously, I would have taken this opportunity in a heartbeat even if it was unpaid. Now, if you have trouble finding a research group to join, which I initially did, branch out and email other professors outside of your department for opportunities. A lot of times it's just about timing, luck, and where the opportunity lies. So don't take it personally if a professor doesn't reply to you. I'm not even exaggerating. I emailed over 30 research groups expressing interest and what I could bring to the table before getting any type of response. Now I knew classmates who just studied, studied, studied with near perfect GPAs and just ignored everything else. And guess what? They all struggle to get internships because grades do not equal skills. Companies hire based on what you can do, not what you scored on your dynamics exam. So once you start developing and mastering these skills, it's time to network and start talking to people. Now, of course, you can do this in parallel while developing skills. The earlier, the better. Networking can be 10 times more effective than applying to opportunities on job portals. I used to think networking was for business majors, you know, like suits, small talk, and handshakes. But I have to hand it to them. Building relationships substantially increases your chance of finding the right opportunity when you need it the most than going at it alone. It could be classmates, alumni, professors, someone you meet in a fraternity, your cousin's boyfriend, literally anyone. Even if they themselves don't know of any opportunities, you never know if they know someone in their network who does. For all you know, the girl who's studying double E that you meet in robotics club, her dad could be the CEO or VP of engineering at a company. Of course, this is a bit exaggerated to hammer home my point that networking is more important than things like grades or having a perfect resume. Looking back and connecting the dots, I would say about 50% of the job opportunities that I ever got came from connections. Of course, I still had to prepare for the interviews and everything, but these connections were able to refer me and allow me to skip the sea of applicants and get my resume into the hands of the right person, which is half the battle. Out of the five internship offers I received, four were companies in Massachusetts where I went to school and one was from Ohio, which is where I'm from. Now, the four offers I got in Massachusetts were ones I applied to on my own through LinkedIn and job portals and the one internship I got in Ohio was through my network. My relatives own a restaurant in Ohio and one of their customers work at a company specializing in the development and manufacture of telescopy mass, industrial lighting, and trailer systems. They actually told him I was searching for an internship and he gave my resume to the CTO of his company who ended up interviewing me. The crazy thing is they weren't even looking for interns at the time, but they had HR open up an internship position anyway. Even though I wanted to intern at the other companies too, this was the internship I ended up accepting because I didn't have to worry about things like rent and could live at home. This saved me so much time, money, and headache. This just goes to show how powerful networking can be and why you should use every chance you get to attend career fairs, events, clubs, gatherings, and office hours and tap into your network whenever possible. You never know who you'll meet or what kind of serendipity might unfold from a single conversation. Once you've kind of built up your network 
and have achieved some results on your club and research projects, it's time to showcase them on your resume. When it comes to building a resume that employers want to read, it needs to be visually appealing and have a clean and simple format. The average time a recruiter spends reading a resume is between six to eight seconds. So use bullet points and remove all the fluff. No one cares if you're a mechanical engineering student who's proficient at Microsoft Word or PowerPoint because that's a given. Keep it tailor-made and relevant to the job you're applying to by including as many key skills and words from the job description on your resume. So for example, this mechanical design engineer role at Apple is looking for someone proficient in design and analysis tools like SolidWorks, Creo, Ansys, Icepack, Finite Element Analysis, NX for 3D CAD, Mechanical Fabrication Processes, GD&T, and so on. So on my resume, I would need to list some type of CAD software that I've used, and it doesn't need to exactly match the job description so long as the skills you list are transferable. So it's perfectly fine if you have some sort of 3D CAD software listed, such as CATIA or FEA software like Abacus, that will directly translate to a job that requires something like NX or ANSYS because it's easy to translate these skills. Now for each bullet point, don't just list what you did. Companies want to see action, results, and outcomes. Quantify your results whenever possible and use action words like implemented, improved, and spearheaded. Don't just say, I improved system performance. Say, I improved system performance by 15% through the redesign of the outlet nozzle. Once you've perfected your resume, it's time to apply to internships. This should ideally be done during the spring semester of your freshman year or the fall semester of your sophomore year. Reach out to everyone in your network. It could be friends, family, recruiters, your connections on LinkedIn, and start distributing your resume to anyone who works or knows of someone who works at a company with internship opportunities who can refer you. At the same time, submit your resume to recruiters that you met at career fairs and on your own through LinkedIn and job portals. You need to apply strategically, not desperately. So customize your application to every job description, show recruiters that you have the skills that they're looking for and that you care. Now, having an engineering portfolio and cover letter aren't necessary for internship applications in my opinion, but they could be nice to have. I didn't have an engineering portfolio, but still ended up getting five internship offers. The final step is to prepare for interviews. Don't wait until companies reach out to you for an interview. Know your resume and projects inside out and be ready to talk about them. Interviewers almost always start by asking questions related to what's on your resume. You shouldn't stress too much because interviews for internships aren't about testing if you're a genius, but rather if you're prepared, passionate, and can communicate your thoughts effectively. You should know what the company does, its products, history, and what their mission and core values are. Now, a huge chunk of interview questions for mechanical engineering internships are almost always technical, like explain the three modes of heat transfer or draw the stress strain curve for an elastic versus brittle material. So brush up on the areas listed in the job description. There are also some interviewers who like to ask behavioral questions, like tell me about the toughest engineering problem you had to solve and what your solution was. Speaking from experience, interview questions for mechanical engineering roles are a wild card and can vary a lot. Many of my interviewers ask me curveball questions that not many students could answer on the fly unless they knew them beforehand or worked for one or two years in industry. So to help you guys out, I put together a list of 80 technical questions that I think are essential for acing any mechanical engineering interview and hopefully will help you land your dream job or internship. For any of you who are interested, I'll drop a link down in the description below. Now, before we continue, one of my favorite platforms that was instrumental in helping me develop engineering fundamentals and prepare for technical interviews was Brilliant, the sponsor of today's video. It helps you get smarter every day with thousands of hands-on lessons in math, physics, data analysis, programming, and AI. Brilliant breaks down problems using a first principles approach. Their lessons build problem-solving skills by allowing you to experiment with concepts. This method is proven to be six times more effective than traditional lecture-based learning. Brilliant's lessons are crafted by professors, researchers, and professionals from MIT, Caltech, Microsoft, and Google, so you learn from the best. Brilliant promotes 
promotes critical thinking through active learning, not memorization, so you become a strong problem solver. It also helps develop the habit of daily learning essential for both personal and professional growth. Brilliant's interactive bite-sized lessons allow you to learn on the go and make the most of your time. One of my favorites is Brilliant's scientific thinking course that teaches you to think like an engineer as you design electric circuits, scare systems, and bridges. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash engineeringgonewild or scan the QR code on the screen or you can check out the link in the description below. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Now I'll end by saying that if you follow the steps outlined in this video, you'll be ahead of most students and land an internship sooner or later. It's only a matter of time. If I could go from 50 plus rejections to receiving five internship offers, so can you. Learn from your mistakes and don't feel down if you get rejected or ghosted. Everyone goes through it, so just move on. Rejections should only make us stronger and motivate us to keep trying. All right, guys, that's it for today. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, be sure to check out my video here where I share my strategy on how to ace any technical interview, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.